All right, so welcome back. Um, so we are now progressing with a third category. And as I say, I know this is going fast, um, but I'll do the teaching and then you can select whatever is really working for you. Uh, but I guess the third category is somewhat similar to the benefactor, it is the friend. So it is generally someone that, um, you know, we already have feelings of kindness for, but could be a little bit more complicated. So, I mean, these could be more family members where we definitely love them, but then the, then, you know, there's, there's more to the relationship. So the benefactor, you know, one of the things when I talk about the benefactor as being sort of an auntie or a friend or a, um, um, you know, grandma is, you know, as well as we, we want a relationship where it's easy to feel love, we also want simplicity. So we talked a little bit about this over lunch. Um, because, you know, some people might take their partners, but often there's a com complex relationship between you and your partner. So it's sometimes easier for the, for, for the easiest person to be someone where the relationship is very simply simple and, and there's a clear sense of kindness between you and them. But as we move on, we are gradually are going to expand out this scope and the next sort of category is, is a friend uh, or, you know, possibly a, a family member where uh, you know there's still love there it's still easy to generate better towards them but there's more sort of uh, complexity in that so we're developing out this meta and just a reminder that you know the goal is really to sort of nourish the body I mean one thing about uh, absorbing in meta is it's very nourishing in comparison to much of our life which is draining which sort of pulls energy out of us we have to give so much energy and you know work you know takes its toll from us the stresses of life take their toll for us so doing a meditation any meditation really but in particular meditation on metta is like having a bath in a sort of a nourishing energy we're bringing that energy into ourselves and it can be nourishing and also energi energizing so that we have a we recharge our batteries ready uh, for the you know the other parts of life which are more energy depleting and um, you know in order to do this, as I've said many times now, to do it powerfully, we want to try to absorb ourselves into it. We want to absorb our body and our mind and our spirit. So to think of positive qualities, to think of the positive phrases, uh, to feel that energy of um, metta in the body, so we absorb all of it in this sort of direction of the goal. And yeah, really sort of harmonizing our practice in, um, in that response. Now, as well as cultivating uh, metta, I did say before that, as you were saying, Tracy, this is a good practice. It can be a samadhi practice as well. And at the very beginning, I talked about samadhi, insight, and metta, and how within each one, there is all three. And in, in general, um, well, not only does each practice deliver all three, we really do want to, as much of, as possible, infuse all three of these strategies within each practice and it might be that at some point in your practice it may feel more helpful for you to say move away from metta and move into more just 
samadhi on the energy body or on the breath or on the feeling of metta. So, uh, if you've been working on metta for some time and you've got a sense of metta coming up, then you can choose either to keep going with those phrases or you might want to stop the phrases and go into a sense of samadhi and concentration on that feeling, on that feeling uh, you know, in your body. And it really doesn't take much effort to move from one to the other. It's like the slightest little move can take you more into samadhi and have that more of, of the focus and, and the metaphrases can still be going on in the background or you can sort of move slightly this way and have the focus on the meta phrases while the sort of samadhi is in the background. And then you might have this sense that, you know, all of these people that we're thinking about, they're dependent on the way we are projecting them. And so there's a selflessness in them. And that way you bring in this idea of insight into the practice. So, uh, at this point I just want to say, this is another feature of meditation, is this sensitivity to changing ever so slightly the direction in which you sort of move uh, towards the deepening of all of these three different aspects. And you might want to play with that and get, it, get more of a sense of which direction is more helpful and the ability to change direction. Does that make sense? Uh, the other thing that you might be discovering uh, about Metta is that it's not necessarily just one exact feeling all the time. Metta has many different flavours. I mean, we can talk about there's kindness. You know, and then there's perhaps a sense of compassion, there's a, a sense of joy, uh, there's a sense of love, you know, there could be a sense of forgiveness. All of these things could be flavours of metta. So, uh, don't try and think that, oh, you know, I'm feeling something but I don't think that's quite it. Instead say, well, think of it as, well, I'm doing well. This is a flavour of metta. You know, if it's got that heart opening sense to it, then you definitely have one of those flavours of metta. So be comfortable with, you know, a range of uh, feelings and that you might flow from one to the other. Again, we're talking here about the sensitivity. Um, and then, of course, as I said before, sometimes there's just no feeling at all. Sometimes there's just a dry patch and uh, it's important not to get disheartened at that point, but just have trust in the process that just keep doing the meditation and it is doing good um, at some level. So. So these are just, I guess, some more teachings about metta as we unfold this subject. Um, one of the foundations of metta, they say, is equanimity. Um, and then actually a little later we'll, we'll talk about the four Brahma Viharas, which um, have equanimity as one of them. But um, the Dalai Lama says, you know, there are nine billion different people in the world and of course many more uh, other creatures but there's one thing that every sentient being has in common and that is we all want happiness and avoid suffering we all want better for ourselves and so in that everyone is equal and i guess we could say that ultimately we all should deserve you know, the chance to find happiness in our own lives. You know, some people may uh, find that difficult, but contemplate that, 
you know, in the end, we all have the chance, you know, to find that sense of happiness. And in order to do that, we need to work through our own misunderstanding that happiness is brought around through giving, not through taking. Um, I think that's the lesson, the ultimate lesson that we have to learn if we really want everlasting happiness. But having a sense of equanimity is important as a basis for uh, metta. So if you're struggling with metta, it might be a good time to leave the metta and just contemplate this idea of equanimity around that statement that, you know, despite all the differences of all the people, ultimately everyone in their own way, many in very deluded ways, are searching for what they think will bring them happiness. You know, as I said, many people are deluded as to how to get that. They think they need to step on someone else in order to get their happiness. Uh, but ultimately their aim is happiness. And I guess in the heart of hearts, I don't think anyone, I believe, it's my own personal opinion, they have necessarily a innate maliciousness to them. That maliciousness comes through their own delusions, their own fears, their own insecurities, and that sort of thing. Anyway, these are some things that you might want to contemplate if you're having difficulty with the meta to try to get that state of equanimity, which then can help us with meta, especially as we go to start to go towards friend and eventually, you know, stranger and difficult people uh, that when we go to later in the day. But for this morning's meditation, which will be a walking meditation, we're going to do a meditation on the friend. So it's important here really to start to bring wisdom and deliberately tune into the good qualities. So our friends are a little bit more complicated. You know, they've got, um, uh, they, they are mostly kind and then sometimes they'll say the odd thing that um, gives us pause to think. So just tune into their good qualities and fill them up with your own uh, kindness towards them. May you be safe and protected. May you be uh, filled with happiness. May you be peaceful and live with ease and kindness. It can help actually um, yeah, so again a reminder, you can watch them giving you meta as well. It doesn't matter how the meta is generated, whether you're receiving or giving, both will generate meta. So you try both of those. Uh, another thing which may work, you can try it, is like imagine physical contact, holding their hand, maybe stroking their hair, um, you know, patting them if it's your favourite dog, etc. So reaching out to touch them in your mind's eye can again stir up something that wasn't there before. Again, it's all in this vein of being totally creative and you would be surprised at how something you think, oh, that's not going to work and you try it on and it's like, well, that's more powerful than I thought. So uh, you might want to try try that. And keep playing around until you see what um, touches your heart. And you'll find that over time that meta will deepen. And after a time it will persist as well. So, you know, uh, as you think more and more kindly about that person, you know, they then become really an anchor for your own meta. So when you see that person, you automatically generate this sense of kindness towards them. So any question on friend? We'll be using the same line as before, but we'll be tuning in and broadening out. And you can, uh, cut, you can take one person and do one person for the whole time, or you can choose to maybe part of the meditation on one person, part on the other, part on the other, and then maybe even at the end do sort of all three at once, for example. It's up to you.
see what works for you. Any questions? All right, so the practice we're going to do is walking meditation. Uh, it's great to have a break from sitting and uh, this can be really useful. It's starting to activate, you know, different energy centers and as we walk, you know, we're activating the physical body. Um, again, it's all in the vein of creativity. Uh, if the, the phrases don't work, you know, the visualizations might, and then we can use visual actions. <clears throat> Perhaps we can visualize walking towards them. Yeah? <clears throat> or we can, you know, visualize walking with them. You know, maybe they're, we're walking next to them, they're walking next to us. Again, light can be very useful. So imagine this energy body as a field of light and expand it to include your friend, you know, or reach out to give it to your friend. Um, so you can imagine walking in a bubble of light or you can imagine light coming from your heart or you can imagine invoking a light in their heart. So light them up from the inside. Uh, they can be giving light back to you. So that's one of the things that I uh, like to visualise is, you know, if you're trying to light a fire, two logs burn closer together because they're giving heat to each other and they increase the intensity. And then once one log is alight, it burns back and helps the first one light faster. So you can imagine that two-way thing of, of meta and that can help create more fire. Uh, you can imagine meta falling as rain, or uh, again, I'm just making these suggestions to implement sort of the creativity um, in yourself. You can be doing it while you're doing the phrases. Um, and again, remember to feel into that kinesthetic sense of, of meta. Uh, you might just do one of those. You might only stick with the phrases, or you might have phrases, visualization, and kinesthetics all going at once. Uh, so um, just be open to whatever's working for you in, in the moment. All right. So obviously it's warm today, we need to find a, a little bit of shade. Uh, usually the, 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 the meditation is sort of eight steps up and then turn around and eight steps back. You know, and if you imagine walking towards them when you get to the end of the path, and then you can sort of feel touch them and then you turn around and miraculously they end up at the other end of the path and then you walk towards them that way. Um, and so we can be practicing that way if we find a little bit of shade to walk back with the story. Any final questions? How long is this meditation? Uh, uh, let's say 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. yep. Good.